We will continue uh, the session for uh, waste management uh, business. And uh, the previous session was by Nita. Uh, and uh, we have completed so far the, uh, these are the different things which we have completed so far. And in the next session, we will be looking uh, it from the Alapura context. So she has, Neeram uh, has uh, dealt it from an Indian or Indian or a general perspective. And now we are coming into the context of Arapur, where you are all now. So in this session, we will be covering uh, what is happening in Arapur municipality uh, with the municipal solid waste management, then uh, situational analysis of solid waste management in Arapur municipality. That is the work which we did uh, through our project, Canal Regulation Project. And uh, then we will go to how uh, we planned it and uh, then to the project. So uh, just giving a brief about uh, uh, Alapura. Uh, I think Sir had uh, shared, uh, Sir had given a general introduction of what Alapura is and uh, the canal network here, etc. This is a, uh, so this is more specific to solid waste management. So population density uh, in Kerala in general increases towards the coast. And Tarakura is a district which is uh, predominantly in the coast. coast and uh, in, uh, in general, there is high density of population in Kerala. And uh, Alapura district is the densiest, uh, den densiest uh, district. Then uh, very limited vacant land is available in town area. That is another issue. Uh, then coastal area with high water table and surrounded by uh, water bodies. So I think sir had covered that as well. That this side is the, uh, the Vampanad Lake <coughs> system and this side is the sea. So this it is a thin uh, land uh, between various water bodies. And there are canals which are uh, flowing through the Town and uh, canals for dumping waste, it's a tragedy of commons, I think uh, sir had uh, covered that as well. And one more uh, important thing here is, rather an alarming thing is that dengue and leprosculosis outbreaks are very frequent here. So I think Neeram had covered in her, uh, one of her slides that solid waste, solid waste has linkages with 22 uh, different diseases. And these two have direct engages with solid waste management. Solid and liquid waste in it. I will start from here, which Neeram had covered. So, uh, as she had mentioned, I mean, you can see that landfills are the least preferred, right? And it goes up to at source reduction and reuse. So, we will see how Alepi's history has been with solid waste management. <coughs> So Alapura, I mean Alapi municipality also was following the same called uh, 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 solid waste management practice of uh, dumping the waste into uh, dumping ground. So that is quite near to who all are from SUF, who all are staying in SUF. Yeah, that is quite close to your uh, place in fact. So, uh, uh, that is the place where the uh, dumping ground was till 2012. And uh, that is part of Maradikulam Panjayat. And it started functioning from the 1950s. And uh, due to public health issues and as well as environmental issues, people started protesting in, uh, uh, from 2012. Around uh, 5,000 protesters, localites, they formed human chains and began to stop the garbage trucks that are flying from Alapura carrying the waste. And their slogan was, waste should not be dumped in our backyard. So because of that, I mean, they, uh, the uh, thing is that, so Alapura municipality had to come up with some other way out of this. And uh, uh, I think some of you are from Trivandrum, right? And their, uh, and also during the discussions, Vilapil Chala also came into, came into discussion. So there, what happened was, I mean, the, the, uh, there was a kind of tussle between the locals and the government, right? But here, things were a bit different. So
so so the protest started and you can see i mean if you go to google earth and see your uh, I mean, the screens this is cesius by the way and uh, how it has transformed from 2013 february to 2015 and this was the time when they started to stop the garbage uh, trucks <coughs> So uh, yeah. So now coming to uh, what paved way to uh, for the authorities to kind of uh, change their mindset and go to a decentralized solid waste management. We will just so Alappuzha and Maharashtra were governed by the left democratic front government. So both local bodies were governed by the same uh, government, and because of that, they were under the pressure that it should be resolved amicably. Okay, so there comes the importance of politics in this. Then they tried. I mean, so after this, this issue came up. So they tried. There itself, they tried for windrow composting at first, and then door-to-door -door collection through Kudumbashree units, but it was unsegregated waste. So these things also they tried, but it kind of failed. So there you can see gender, technology, and society working. Then uh, Kerala Municipality Act was also made much more stringent in 2014. And uh, 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 everywhere in Kerala, there was this right to treat solid and uh, I mean segregate solid and liquid waste, and uh, that was uh, made uh, mandatory. So that also helped. So there was no other way that but to go into segregation and try for another alternative, which. Again, they were uh, kind of looking into, looking into, and then they tried to collaborate with various agencies. Uh, Anert was one, then IRTC was one. So uh, they they tried to collaborate and come up with a solution. Then uh, that is how it came up. The campaign come pro uh, project of Nirmala Bhavan and Nirmala Dagram, which is which translates to Clean House, Clean City project came up. In uh, around that time, 2013, that period, and the, the uh, why it was a campaign is because it was for creating public awareness. And in the first phase, they gave pipe compost, portable, and fixed biogas units uh, to be installed in house households uh, for treating organic waste and source. And the philosophy that was followed for this project was that, uh, as Neelam had mentioned, my waste is my responsibility. So that you can even if you go around the city, you can see uh, those campaign uh, uh, taglines in many of the posters. Posters. So for that, what they did was, uh, I mean, so these are these were the three technological options which they had uh, come up with at first. And you can see that see for centralized, it is one technology fits all. That technology is nothing but dumping the waste into. Uh, the uh, to a land, but here because it is decentralized kind of a planning, we need different technological choices based on the requirement from ground. So here, if you see, uh, you can see who for whom it is catering. So these two fixed biogas plants and portable biogas plants are for households with land availability, and for smaller households, it was pipe compost. And you can also see the cost of each of these. So this is how socio-economics plays an important role when it comes to decentralized planning as well. And also you can see for households having financial and space constraints, they were urged to deposit their waste in biogas plants of neighbors. So these considerations were taken up when they were uh, uh, kind of uh, coming up with the solutions. So after that, this uh, again, I mean, they adopted this. It, uh, it started uh, and it uh, continued for around one year and within few months what happened was although because of this campaign mode more people started to use it many of them faced many issues and a uh, few of the issues faced are this there was not enough waste available uh, for the biogas unit there was a need for fresh powder and regular maintenance and need for repairs were there and for those the municipality as well as the people involved came up with solutions. So this also play, uh, played an important role to sustain this project. 
and that is why uh, I have uh, mentioned ELCP and the citizens learn from uh, from this initiation and planning by itself is an iterative process. It's not like I mean one is a success model as such. There will be issues and it needs to be resolved. So uh, what Alapura did was or is doing is so this is from uh, CSE. There is one book called uh, Not in My Backyard. It's based on their uh, uh, analysis of solid waste management practices across 77 cities in India. And they rated uh, the solid waste management uh, 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 model of Alapura as one of the topmost. So in, in that, they have mentioned that this is their uh, kind of framework which they have used. So in collection, you can see the uh, segregation is being done, then bio, uh, it is being segregated into these three things. Construction and demolition waste is not being uh, segregated. Then there is penalty for non segregation from the uh, mandated law, and then uh, street sweeping leaves are going into compost. Uh, so we will come to uh, so after this, what happened was so these are household level uh, units for. Uh, 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 for treating household waste. Now, many of the households still didn't had uh, the, uh, any unit, so they had to come up with another kind of a uh, 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 technological option, which is aerobic unit. So this was proposed again in 2013 for households and small shops which do not have waste processing units. So this was used in Kerala Agricultural University in Trishu, where uh, they were using it for uh, 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 for uh, dealing with the carcasses of animals and uh, uh, from that they came up with this particular technology and uh, these are just the uh, various uh, characteristics and uh, the, of that particular technology. So it takes 2000 kilograms which we can go in detail later on. But uh, only thing is, so this technological option was taken up, taking into consideration uh, suitability of Kerala's climate as well as uh, the climate also is a, uh, uh, is a thing which needs to be taken into account when it comes to composting. Uh, so being a tropical climate, this composting kind of a technology is suits well. So it was, so what happens to the compost? It was given to, given free of cost to farmers, even now that, that is what they are doing. It was piloted in 12 watts, now it is spread across 23 different locations. And uh, convenient workers who used to transport the waste before, they uh, actually are, uh, were given training and management. So this is how the uh, unit looks like. And uh, 90 to 120 days, once it is there, the biodegradable waste and, uh, gets converted into organic compost. I did. And MRF units are also part of this particular unit, but not in all, but uh, uh, out of the 23, 10 units have MRF units where they use uh, I mean separate bins for plastic bottles and lids, which later is given for either shredding or for bailing and then for some other use. It is reduced. And uh, uh, as I said, plastic and uh, plastic that is what they do and also there was one uh, 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 one company that was made under uh, local self LSD department which was made responsible for plastic waste collection as well. Uh, it was segregated to various segregated and then shredded and pellets were And other wastes, uh, so waste from hotel shops what is happening in Alapura is that they are contracted to private agencies. Uh, then hazardous waste uh, and e waste, they are periodic, there is periodic collection by the uh, municipality. And hospital waste, it is being done by another group called Image. Uh, so it is part of the Indian Medical Association and they have a biomedical treatment and disposal facility in Pali. And plastic waste actually is being transported from here to Tamil Nadu. We rode in the moon. And this is the current situation. So, uh, right now, uh, we will see what the municipality has given in their uh, DPR and uh, what 
they, uh, uh, this is the latest DPR which they have come up with. Uh, so this is average, I mean the generated uh, waste average per day is 58 tons and this is the uh, segregate, I mean, uh, the percentage of each of these waste which is being generated. So you can see only 23 percentage of the waste is going into community aerobic units and uh, 9 percentage is being done. Uh, so from our uh, kind of experience what we have found out is that these things get segregated at source but after that what is happening is it is being dumped into canals uh, and these two are also being followed by uh, but by a uh, 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 not by all all in the uh, city. So that is the uh, kind of situational analysis of the uh, waste segregation and where it is going. And uh, this is the composition of the waste generated. And you can see biodegradable waste is almost 3-4. Then existing so we talked about aerobic units, the biogas plants and pipe pumps. So you can see the number is not so high. But there is a kind of drive where they are also planning to have more uh, biogas plants and pipe pumps.